Welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin' Podcast. I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans, the fiery redhead, if you're just listening. Um, and my husband is my podcast co-host, Alan Evans. Hello, I'm Alan. Yeah, freshly did my roots. They were out of the color I normally use, so I went a shade brighter and left it on a tad too long. How fire are these roots looking in this light? And you have a... Uh... An orange LED light yes. about two feet from your head. Highlighting. Oh. Highlighting all the red. It's looking, I think it looks very nice, actually. Well, it looks I very the nice. Roots, I like it. What you're supposed to do is, you know, leave it on your roots for a while and then pull it through the ends. But I left the roots on too long. But the thing about red is after I wash it for a week or two, it'll all even out and be perfect. I'm not worried about it. Never cry over messed up hair. Because it'll always, you could grow it out. Or color it something else, right? Well, you know what I heard one time? You should blame it all on your roots. I also heard that uh, nothing grows back slower than a bad haircut. That's true. That's true. That's why you should always cut your hair on the growing moon and not the shrinking what moon. What is the growing moon? When the moon is going from small to big, your hair will grow faster. That's why you want to cut it on the growing moon. If you cut it on the shrinking moon, it'll grow slower. So if you want your hair cut to last longer... After a full moon, and it starts getting the moon starts getting smaller. That's when you get a haircut. Is that a waxing or waning gibbous moon? I don't know what a gibbous means. Well, the boys were talking about this the other day in the car and about the moon. Yeah, waxing and waning gibbous. I, I mean, it, it, it's been a while since I've been in school, and I I have dumb face. I have no idea what they're talking about. Waxing and waning. I re- kind of remember that, but they were talking about the gibbous. I'd have to look it up. I know what a gibbon is. Do you know what gibbon is one of the three remaining apes? You have the, well, I'll just give you a little, I'll drop a wow. little, I'm going to drop a little random knowledge. Who knew you've it got, would go this way? You've got the gorilla, you've got the chimpanzee, and you've got the gibbon. Did you see? People forget about the gibbon. That there's a new Planet of the Apes movie coming out? I did not. I am not a fan of Planet of the Apes movies because they freak me out. Why do they freak you out? These are, you know, back in the day with the original with Charlton Heston. I mean, that's wow. If you go way back, these um, actors were dressed up like apes and mm-hmm. they, they talk and they have human emotions and they're just these monkeys, uh, the apes. Apes. And they they show affection and they talk and, they, and it's just like it freaks me out. And there's a new movie coming out that I will not be seeing. But I do hope everybody um, takes our recommendation to goes and goes to see The Fall Guy. Because it did not do well its opening weekend at the box office. Is that right? The only thing we can figure, hmm. we were talking to um, our film reviewer, Gray Drake, mm-hmm. um, who does movie reviews on the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Nationally syndicated. We were talking about it, and she said, yeah, Hollywood's kind of stumped as well. But there was so much going on last weekend as far as sports and things like that lots of playoff games you know there's the playoffs hockey. well there's the hockey we there's... Talking about playoffs well, i don't know what it is they're they're doing playoffs? elimination rounds yeah yeah why are you saying playoffs like i'm wrong that's the jim mora bit right? oh I've i don't know i've explained that to you before i don't i can't remember stuff like that oh i'm sorry you're making me you're making me think i was wrong playoffs but there's like um there's baseball games but then also basketball and hockey playoffs right yeah, the Dallas Stars advanced. Not that we're big hockey fans in this house, but hey, I'll jump on that bandwagon. We're bandwagon. I'll right. jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. They beat Las Vegas, who apparently they won it all last year. Didn't know that until this year. So the Stars advanced. They played game one last night. I don't know if they won or not. That's how big a fan I am. Yeah, I don't know. But I have been following your Dallas Mavericks very closely. How did they do in their game one? Ah, uh, they lost. Yeah, yeah they, they kept it kind of close until the third quarter, and then uh, Oklahoma City uh, kind of opened it up. Well, Oklahoma City's good. I haven't seen them play many games. I'm talking a lot of sports here. but That's okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. They, they have a really athletic young team. But that's enough sports talk. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Quite enough. Go Mavs. Mavs. Except we're going to talk golf. We may talk golf. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not enough sports talk because... You know, last podcast we told you that we had planned to go golfing before last podcast, but it was just so hot or windy or rainy, something happened. It was bad weather. But this week I was like, I don't want to put it off any longer. I want to get back out there because if I don't do it, I'm just going to keep coming up with more and more excuses. So Al and I went out to the driving range on Tuesday this week. Golf. Is golf a sport? 
I know it's argued that it is not, but I think it is. I think we've done this before. Is it an Olympic sport yet? They've added so much crazy stuff to the Olympics. I will submit to you, good, strong, dear, sweet, clean listener, that a sport is not a sport unless there's a ball or a puck. Without a ball or a puck, it is not a sport. How about archery? It's an activity. Archery, I don't think you're right. I think that's in the Olympics, archery. I don't care where it is. It's, it's an activity. It's target, target shooting. Target shooting is an activity. Wow. So you're there's gonna, no need so to skeet sh- So skeet shooting is a sport? So you're going to say cheerleaders aren't athletes? I didn't say they weren't athletes, but that's not a sport. Athletes play sports. Well, athletes are athletic. But they also play sports. So what about horse racing? Not a sport. I don't want to talk. I, I don't feel like arguing. I'm not arguing. I'm just like throwing it. it out for debate and discussion. I don't feel like having my brain twisted into having to come up with explanations. I just don't feel like it. Well, the reason. Like <laughs> why are you so defeated? I just don't want to talk about stuff like that. Well, the reason I brought up horse racing is because the Kentucky Derby was this weekend. Did you watch it? No. Yeah, neither did I. Well, it's not a sport. I don't care if it is or isn't, <laughs> actually. I've been to Churchill Downs. You have as well. Haven't you? Didn't you tell me I've you went been, there one time? I went when I was with Dish Nation. Dish Nation! I would go out and do the red carpet interviews one year, which Got was it. a beating. Mm. Beating. Mm. Because they don't always have A-listers show up for those red carpets. Um, the A-listers, like this year Travis Kelsey was there, and I highly doubt he walked the red carpet um, for interviews. But, you know, you're, you're sitting there begging. What What's that? Anna Nicole Smith's? Baby Daddy that keeps showing up every year with Danny Lynn. Wait a minute. Anna Nicole Smith's Baby Daddy? Yes. She had a daughter with this guy that I cannot remember his name, but he goes every year to the Kentucky Derby with his daughter, Danny Lynn. And she's been, you know, growing up. That's how I keep track of her. Every, I think she's 17 or 18 now. But for some reason, she has this connection with Janet Jackson. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because of the tragic loss of her mother and Janet's tragic loss of her brother. I don't know. But she wears Janet Jackson's clothes to the Kentucky Derby. It's just odd. But yeah, so that people like that, I'm begging them to come speak to me. Anna Nicole Smith, no longer with us, right? No, she passed away a long time ago. A long time ago. But not before I saw the spread. Her, uh... Playboy spread? Penthouse! Oh, Penthouse, I don't know. This was years ago. Oh, this was when I could just have one lying on the coffee table and it didn't matter. Because you were a bachelor? Yes. Just have one just just lying in the apartment. You would probably go to the store and buy one? I'm about to sneeze. Uh (coughs) Uh-oh. Bless you, babe. Excuse me, that hit me. I'm sorry. Bless you. Um, I, I don't remember how that issue was procured. I'm, I, I don't. It was one issue. I don't recall the one and only issue you ever had. I can't remember if it was one issue or it was. I a, remember finding one. Or a subscription. One. I remember finding one in my uncle Red's bathroom. Whoa! Whoa! In the bathroom? Huh? Yeah. I wonder what it was doing in there. Well, he was my rich uncle Red. The kid used to make fun of on the radio. It's fine. They they said he was like a secret agent man, but he he did work in military intelligence. He's passed away. But um, he married my Aunt Lacey, who has also passed away, but she was from Texas Oil Money. And they were really rich. And they had a massive bedroom with his and her bathrooms. So on the side of the bed she slept on was her bathroom, and on the side of the bed he slept on was his bathroom. And I remember my Aunt Lacey, over her toilet, she had this gigantic movie poster of the creature from the Black Lagoon. And he's coming up out of the pool, and it says, who peed in the pool? And I always thought that was the best that, you know. And then around her house, she collected um, merry-go-round horses from, like, the turn of the century, like the early 1900s. Kind of creepy. No, it was cool. She collected them, and she would refinish them, and they'd have real horse, because back then, they'd have real horse tails. So she'd have them just uh, situated throughout her home, these antique um, merry-go-round horses. Hmm. And she had a giant jukebox in her house. She was in love with Tom Jones. And I remember they went to see him in Vegas one time. And my uncle somehow got to Tom Jones and invited him over for a steak dinner. 
I don't recall Tom accepting. But anyway, that was my eccentric fun, Uncle Red and Aunt Lacey. I tell you, I went to the doctor the other day, and the doctor was checking me out, and he said, he looked at me, he said, you have Tom Jones syndrome. And I said, oh my gosh. I said, should I be concerned? He goes, oh no, it's not unusual. Did you make that joke up? On the I think spot? I made that joke up right here on the spot on wow. the podcast. How do you like we'll that? We'll see if it goes anywhere. How do you we'll like see if it that has one? Legs. How do you like that one? You know, every joke has a beginning. Somebody has to be the first to tell it. Those jokes that you've heard a million times, somebody told it the first time. I'm probably not the first to come up with that one. In fact, I probably saw it somewhere and it was just rattling. Buried in the recess. Yeah, it was rattling around in my skull. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it came out today. So, anyway, back to me. And golf. So it's been about a year since I've swung a club, Alan. It got too hot last summer, and I have a feeling we're on a bullet train to another summer like that. But uh, we got out there for, I don't even know if we made it a whole hour before you were pitting out. I was about to pass out. Well, here's the deal. I don't, um, I don't put a lot of stock in, I mean, unless you're a professional. Me and you doing some big, long, drawn-out practice. You Not know, necessary. The quantity of practice at our advanced age is not really important. It's the quality of practice and I think the frequency of practice. Well, if you want to if you want to get good. Yeah, you know. if you had a little kid out there, you'd probably have done the same thing. You don't want to yeah. you want them to practice enough where it's fun and then when it starts getting frustrating fr frustrating, let's call it a day. Because it was starting to get frustrated when you had me switch clubs and mm -hmm. I wasn't getting it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm done with that, but I want to hit one good shot. And then when I hit that one good shot, I said, done. Sitting down on a high note. Yeah, the thing about uh, I'm trying to do with Kelly is just, just this isn't like, uh, you know, a death sentence. Going out and hitting golf balls. You're not, we're not sentenced to death. It should be fun. Well, so I'm trying be. to make it fun. We're trying to have fun. It should be. Until somebody slipped into my DMs and told me, try... Uh, told me in my DMs, uh, try not to be so stiff. Oh... Uh, but good job. You know and you, I was like, why? You know what you need why? to tell them? Try not to be so dumb. No, that's not what I said. I said, telling me to try not to be so stiff is like telling me to try to keep my eye on the ball. Because I'm trying to do those things. But telling me to try not to be so stiff. Let me guess. Was it helpful? And let me guess. It was a dude. No. Really? Yeah. It was a chick. Yeah. Giving you golf advice. Telling me, try not to be so stiff. How about that? Now, if you know anything about me, I am a stiff white woman with a bad shoulder. And the fact that I was even, you saw me. The fa I can't even hardly lift my arm over my head. So, I don't know. But that, that doesn't, just, that but just that, but like, that sucked the joy out of my sails. But That's that not doesn't, even possible. But that doesn't matter. Your, your, your physical makeup at your age, taking up golf, none of that. I don't care about any of that. Because what I'm teaching you is a way to play golf and have fun, hit the ball a good amount, hit it in the direction you want to hit it, and have fun playing golf. I don't care really what you look like. I know that you're going to hit a good shot or not hit a good shot based on how you're set up and what you're doing. I and mean, Alan was helping me with yeah. my... He was telling me, you know, bend over from the waist like in an athletic stance, but just let your arms hang loose. So that's what I was doing, mm -hmm. but apparently I wasn't loose enough for Thanks. that particular person. But I'm not going to let that stick in my craw. I've gotten it off my chest. Golf advice, it's like, I don't know. It's kind of like fishing advice. It's like when you go fishing, you just want to just fish and do your thing. And if, you know what? If I want to throw a white grub on there and everyone else is catching fish with the chartreuse grub, I'm going to throw my white grub out there. I don't need you to come over and tell me that I should change my grub to the chartreuse grub. I'm going to use my white grub. It's the same thing with golf. Are you referring to me as a grub? No. It's the same thing. Am I thi the white grub? No. It's the same thing with golf. You do your, we're working on your thing and we're going to stick to that. That's what we're going to do. And I think you're doing great. Thank you. After just, this is a, I like, mean, I hadn't hit a ball in a year. What is year. this, your third time to hit golf balls? Fourth time? I think it's my fourth, yeah. Fourth? I think I had, I think I had a grand total of three lessons last year. Well, you <laughs> so know. That's okay. I, you know, I picked up where I left off and I think it went fine. People don't understand, too, that like, you know, have never been golfing or maybe don't golf a lot. It is the hardest sport to pick up, especially when you're older. 
It really? Is, yes. I would think it'd be harder to pick no. up football, no, it, baseball, well, basketball. Okay, I'm talking about the sports like tennis, pickleball, golf, oh, yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. It is very difficult to play it well. So, you know what? I bet you, you can hit it a lot better than a lot of the people that are sliding your DMs telling you that they got a lot better advice for well, you. Well, I know I'm stiff. But I am trying. You're, you're, you're not stiff. I don't think you're stiff. You're, you know. I'm you're, trying. You're making the swing that we're teaching you to swing. Thank I, you, And honey. I think it's great. Well, thank you. I'm trying to develop more hobbies. You know, Kid Craddock used to always ask me, what, do you have any hobbies? And my answer's always been, no, I don't have hobbies. I don't. And I've been really thinking about that a lot lately because I am getting older. And eventually, I'm not going to be working anymore. And then it's like, then what am I going to do? And Alan has a million hobbies. Oh. So I don't necessarily want to do all of Alan's hobbies with him. And I don't think he wants me to do them all with him either. But to have one or two things we can do together that you don't consider a beating and I don't, con you know, that neither of us consider a beating would be a nice thing to do. And golfing can be one of them. Speaking of hobbies, we didn't talk about this. A uh, couple of, well, this, is, this happened a couple of weeks ago. We went to our friend. Uh, Dave Heck's birthday, 50th birthday. Yes. And we were hanging around his uh, patio after the, or the house where we had the surprise birthday party. And uh, a call for the amazing Alonzo was put out. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, you whoa. You were not prepared for that. You were not wearing your... But what happened? You weren't wearing your magic jacket. But what happened? You made it happen. You, Thank you. You, you Thank got a deck you. of cards and you Thank made you. it happen. Of Thank course, you. they started asking for... You know, all the bells and whistles sounds like, well, I'm I didn't, not, really, I didn't bring, not really prepared. I didn't bring all my stuff. Bring, but yeah, they wanted to see a little bit. So if I have a deck of cards and a rolled up bald, rolled up piece of paper, I can do some tricks. A rubber yeah, band, yeah. I can do some tricks, you know. But yeah, you're just saying hobbies reminded me of that. I forgot I haven't done that in so long. A long time. Yeah. Here in the studio, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see right behind our heads are a bunch of magic books right behind us. How about Practical Magic, Magic Tricks, Mark Lesman's Card Magic, right over there with Metallica, the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Guitar Heroes, and Jack Nicklaus' Golf My Way, and How I Play Golf, Tiger Woods, and there Proficient Motorcycling. Lots of hobbies. Why don't you just go through Lots every... of hobbies yes. back there. Yes, well, lots no, I, of books. I was just bringing up, we got guitar, we got magic, we got golf, and we got motorcycling. Just on that one shot. Yeah. Alan does all of those things. Yeah. And now I'm going to be golfing. Yes. And I'm going to make that a hobby. I need to, somebody was saying you need a hobby for your health. You need a hobby for your mind. And there was one other one I can't remember. I don't remember what it was. But it's like you have three different categories of hobbies. And so they said, you know, reading can be a hobby. Crossword puzzles can be a hobby. So those would be good for your mind, right? Mm -hmm. For your health, getting outside, playing golf. That's good for your physical. Wordle. That's brain health. That's mental. Mm. You know, is that a hobby doing wordle every day? Maybe, maybe. I've got some jigsaw puzzles i got to work on. Man, my hobbies are just piling up. Jigsaw puzzles? I sound like a neat, neat lady, Jigsaw, don't I? yeah. Golf and jigsaw puzzles. I love a good jigsaw. Should, should we be looking for a retirement home? It's not a bad idea. Man. You know, we are old enough to live in one of those 50-plus communities. But you can't have any children living in the home when you're there. So no. we have to wait till all of our kids are out. I think, don't you also get 20% off Tuesdays at Ross? I get, I don't know. I know I, I get. I think it's 55. I can't eat off the um, senior menu at IHOP. I think once you hit 55, right? 50, you get your AARP card, even though you do not have to be 50 to have it. You can be any age and have your AARP card because you get discounts. Are we really talking about AARP? Well, you just, you just said I was old enough to get a discount at Ross. Okay. I'm just saying, that was something I did not know about AARP until, you know, that card comes in the mail right when you're about to turn 50. It's like a punch in the gut. But, you know, you don't have to be 50 to get it. Well, I'll tell you what, just real quick before we do this, um, Kelly's talking about hobbies. we got something brewing. We're not going to talk about it right now. Well, then why would you tease them like that? Because you just wait a podcast or two. You're going to be shocked, y'all. This will be, this will shock and awe you. It's pretty mind-blowing. What, what Kelly is 
wanting to do. That's Pops all the I, heck out of me, too. That's all I can say about it. It's going to be a, another hobby. Yeah, another hobby. To my list. Another hobby. And, you know, I'm just, I'm still just kind of shaking my head, just kind of puzzled at all this. But when the time is right. But a little tickled as well. You well, giggle yeah. occasionally. When the time is right, dear sweet, clean listener, we will let you take the pebble from our hand and we will reveal all. In a podcast or two. Yes. All right. Oh. More to come. So keep listening. Is when the we're point. free to talk about it, yeah. I'm I'm I can't even believe it either. It's anyway. I don't want to make y'all like just go ahead and say it, so we'll stop talking about this. That. Is all this is like doing the prayer I warriors know, it's not bit. Right. Yeah, this is like doing the prayer warriors bit. An unspoken prayer. Unspoken request. prayer request. Well, what's wrong? Wait, oh, I can't talk. God about knows. It. I, I can't talk about God it. God knows. I can't talk about it. All right, some days, you know, I want to do a full face of makeup. Other days, I just want to get out the door looking alive. But whatever I'm going for, Thrive Cosmetics is what I use to make it happen because no matter what, I start with the Brilliant Eye Brightener in Stella. It's a champagne color. If I wear it all by itself, I put a little in the corner of my eyes, sweep it across my lids, that makes me look awake. It wakes my face up. But when I want to add more color or drama, I just use one or more of Thrive's Cosmetics, Thrive Cosmetics, 15 other blendable shades. I can create a smokier eye, a classic look. It is foolproof, seriously. It, it doesn't crease all day. It's perfect. And how can you not love Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara? The first time I wore it, my daughter infamously asked me, did you get your lash extensions put back on? Because it's just that good. And it nourishes your lashes, supporting longer, stronger, healthier looking lashes over time. And don't forget the word cause is in the name for a reason because for every product you purchase, Thrive Cosmetics donates products and funds to help communities thrive, including those that support our military. And of course, you know how much the military means to Alan and myself. Refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics. Luxury beauty that gives back, and right now you can get an exclusive 10% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash sandwich. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash sandwich for 10% off your first order. All right. So in addition to what we cannot talk about. Uh, just another follow-up to my doctor's appointment. So I was at my doctor when he told me about the Tom Jones syndrome. Oh, yeah. I was like, what doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, Doc, what are the secrets to a long and healthy life? And he kind of just you know, pondered that for a second. He says, don't talk about Boeing. Boeing? Boeing. The planes? Yes. What's the secret? Oh, Alan, that's terrible. You're talking about the whistleblowers that are dead? That's not funny. Well, there's been two of them. Oh, that's not a joke. That's not nice. That's not funny. I just asked for the secrets to a long and healthy life, and he said, don't talk about Boeing. Oh, I didn't like that one. Supposedly, there's like 11 more that are like, that want to talk? What's going to happen to them? I don't know, but it's definitely not joke fodder. Who is often these people? Alan, I don't know. I want to know. I'm not educated enough on the subject to discuss it, nor do I want to. Well, you, you know what's happened, right? Well, I know there were two, a couple of whistleblowers. I just saw the headlines. I didn't open the articles, so I haven't read them. Boeing's had doors fly off these yes, jets. Yes, and there were whistleblowers And there's about people it. inside the company saying, we knew about this. They're we wanted to do something products. about this. They, they knowingly put out airplanes where they knew there was a problem. Yeah. And now you got people coming forward, and then coincidentally... The first two have died. Isn't that a little strange? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know enough to talk about it. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. Well, we, maybe we shouldn't. Wait, I, I think... Don't know. I, hold on. I think there's somebody at the door. Oh. Who? <laughs> Usually it's... <laughs> and then, oh, you mean... And then, the, and, then, and then somebody comes in. I, am, I don't think Alan and I are on the same page at all. I'm trying to do a skit. You're just not following along with me. I didn't. I don't, I'm like, when did you go to the doctor? Good grief. <laughs> when is your next doctor's appointment, FYI? I don't know. Oh, with with Jellyfinger or just... I, Anything. Well, you're, supposed, you're about to... Are you supposed to be getting a colonoscopy I'm, soon? Well, they've called me like twice now. You need to go. No, I, and I'm, also, this I'm is, supposed to have my follow-up. This is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, too, and I need to get checked head to toe because, you know, I'm a fair-skinned 
white woman, if y'all haven't noticed, again, mm. with fiery red hair. Mm. But when I was a little girl, I used to get sunburned quite a bit. I've been more careful as I've gotten older, but the damage done to your skin when you're a child can affect you as an adult. So I need to go get checked. It's very important. No, it is. I don't think, I don't know if you have to worry about it. Wow. Darker what? Whoa. Well, no, Whoa. What's whoa about that? I just don't know if it's as prevalent in people who have more melanin in their skin, right? You can still get skin cancer. I did that bit to Emma Kelly the other day because she's she's yeah. People don't know how to react when you do that. It makes I know them feel, that's why I do it. I don't like it. She she she's laying out. Have you told that story? No. Emma, Emma Kelly has this this cot in the backyard. It's a chaise lounge. Yeah, but it's called an ostrich cot. It's so you can thing, yeah, where yeah. you can the face is out like a massage table. So if you're laying on your stomach, you can put your face through it and look at your phone because you can't be separated from your phone for a minute. Yeah. But it's also helpful because laying on your side with your face side to side, mm -hmm. your neck side to side, that hurts. Mm -hmm. So I was just teasing her. She well, I wasn't teasing her. She said, I asked her what that thing was for. She goes, Well, I, you know, I'm gonna lay out because I want to get dark. And, I, and she looked at me and she goes, well, not as dark as you. Oh. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And she did the same thing. Yeah, because like, it's like. Yeah. Because you you're implying that we're racist. <laughs> and I'm, that's such a no, fun I'm thing not. to be called. No, I'm not. I never said that. What does whoa, whoa mean then? If you're not implying that we're racist. I don't know. It just makes you. And it makes people really uncomfortable. <laughs> That's one of my bits to make people really uncomfortable. That's what people love. <laughs> it's being made to feel really uncomfortable. But it, I was that's just... how you win. That's like the first chapter in how to win friends and influence people. But I was people. joking. I don't care. Make people feel like they're a racist and then laugh about it but afterwards. I, but I don't care that you guys called me dark. I know, but whenever you say, whoa, whoa, it makes oh. me, like, what did I say wrong that was offensive? <laughs> Always offending somebody. Yeah, you are. It's true. Yeah, very offensive. Hey, listen, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm not sure if this is available for streaming. I'm going to find out, um, so maybe it would be available after the fact. But a couple weeks ago, I was invited to be on a new late-night talk show. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's called La Last Call with Steve Noviello, and he's a really great reporter for the local Fox News affiliate, Fox 4. And um, it's going to be this coming now what day is it today's may 8th so if you're listening i don't know when you listen to this podcast so this is going to be this weekend which is may 11th and 12th so um at 10 o'clock on saturday may 11th and 10 30 on sunday may 12th um, i'm going to be on the panel with steve noviello and what he does is he has one person who is not employed by fox 4 along with two employees there, so it's like a little panel of four people, including him, and they just discuss topics that are in the news, which is really um, fun. But it was my first time ever doing something like that, and we recorded two shows. Um, so I brought a change of clothes and changed real quick and came back and did a second one. And I'll tell you, the first show, I didn't do very great. Why? I just didn't, you know. Were you stiff? I was stiff. I need to be less I need stiff, to be Kelly. Looser. I need to be less stiff. But. It's very different than doing radio because in radio, we've got nine minutes or something to talk about one thing. And he's trying to squeeze in two or three topics in one break, which is less than nine minutes. So I would maybe have something I wanted to say and not Steve's fault at all. He would just move on to the next topic. I'm like, oh, then I, I'm learning. I need to interject if I if I need to, you know, get a point across or something. So by the end of the second show, I was starting to get my sea legs a little, you know, by the end of the second show. Kelly got her groove back? Yeah, well, I, I started to get a groove. I had no groove to get back because I'd never done anything like that before. So anyway, I, he was very sweet and complimentary and lovely. That's when we all need to go out on double dates and because um, he's really fun. And anyway, it's going to be this weekend. I said, if you're gracious enough to have me back, I'm better prepared next go round. But right now, you know, it's just a couple of nights um, on the weekends, but eventually they're going to be five nights a week, I believe, for his late night programming. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like that Greg Gutfeld show, you know, on if you watch Fox News Channel, minus the political. So they just talk about the topics in the news, minus the political lean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just fun stuff going on. Yeah, just random stuff. Cool. Um, so anyway, that's this weekend it. on Fox 4 in Dallas. Like I said, if there is a link, 
I'll post it on my social media. Social can, media. Yeah, I've already posted um, on my Facebook page, which is at Kelly Raspberry Evans, um, and I'll post a link on my Instagram as well. Um, but if I have a link you can watch online, I'll let you know. Because I know a lot of people listen to the podcast that aren't in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and you're like, I can't get that channel. So if there's a link, I'll get it for you. Okay. Else it's Mother's Day this weekend as well, Alex. Yeah, we got Mother's Day this weekend. Yeah, yeah, a so lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Do not forget your mom. Um, just the littlest thing you can do. I, like Emma Kelly's like, what do you want? Because she wants to buy me something. And I get that. I always wanted to buy things for my mom. You know what I told her I wanted? And she's kicking and screaming, but I think she's finally relenting. It's not going to cost her anything. Is to let, I've been asking her to do this with me for a year. To go into her bathroom and organize it. That's what I want to do for my Mother's Day present is organizing McKelly's bathroom because it drives me nuts. And every time I go in a room, I make some snarky mom comment. She ends up getting her feelings hurt. And I'm like, that's what I want for Mother's Day. I want to throw away all the products you're not, not using, get them organized, make it look nice. That will make my mom soul sing. We've lived here since 2018. Yes. I think I've been in that bathroom once or twice to like change a light bulb or something. There's a couple things I'd like for you to do in there, but I don't want to bother you with it. Wow. Somebody, they hung, whoever did this house, they did some quirky things. You know how you have a towel uh, thing to hang your hand towel on the wall? Mm -hmm. They hung it so low that the whole towel lays on the counter. Lays in the sink? Oh, lays on the and counter. And to get Alan to move it, he did, we'd have to patch a whole wall, hole in the wall. Hmm. But I don't want to bother you with that. Nima Kelly hasn't said anything. And also, I think this bathroom was an add-on to this house. It was. She is in a bathroom, a shower stall that she can barely turn around. It is that tiny, but now she's gotten used to it. And the door won't shut. The magnet on the door won't shut. Hmm. And I thought that would be an easy fix, but no, you have to replace the entire shower frame. Mm. So those are things, and she's not complaining, so we're not doing those things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got off on a tangent. Sorry. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, Mother's Day. There was something else I was going to mention, but I, I, I forgot what it was. Well, oh, I know what it was. Uh, let's bring it home for Jerome. Yeah, the Operation Once in a Lifetime Rock Yeah, we've got troops. Operation Once in a Lifetime, 12th Annual Rock for the Troops. If you hear this in time, I think you can just show up to this event. I don't think you need tickets, is what Patrick told me. It's open to the public. Yeah, they want you to come in and you know but, buy uh, raffle tickets. Yeah, to support the, uh, the military and support Operation Once in a Lifetime. It's a charity Kelly and I um, have supported for years, and... They grant wishes uh, to military members, active duty, and veterans for them and their families, and they just do all kinds of great stuff. Not not just taking them to games and things, but like Patrick's taking a big group to Arlington National Cemetery pretty soon. That's what this the proceeds from this event are going to go to. Yeah, and among other things, air, he was telling me what airfare is to take you know thirty people up there. It is incredibly expensive yeah. right now. So, yeah, any any little bit helps. Um, and you can follow them on Facebook, too, if you just want to check it out and see what it's all about. And uh, you can donate there, too, but it's Operation Once in a Lifetime. That's the he charity really I... does most on his Facebook page. Facebook, yeah. That's where you get most of the information for Operation Once in a Lifetime. It's the charity that I um, help out when I go to Sturgis, right up there and raise money for, for Operation Once in a Lifetime. Yeah, so we're doing that on Mother's Day. We're hosting the Raspberry Moms at our house on Saturday. We're doing the Evans Moms with brunch on Sunday. So we've got a lot of celebrating of moms yeah. this weekend. All right. The good old boys won't be racing, though. No. NASCAR doesn't race on Sundays, on Mother's Day. Because they know better. They know better. We're, we were just talking, no shade, but I guess this is shade. Do you know that they have a Mother's Day tournament? Was it soccer or baseball? I think it's baseball. Though. Baseball. Yeah. Who thinks that, I mean, I know there are moms that absolutely love it, but don't you think on Mother's Day they wouldn't be doing a Mother's Day sporting tournament for anybody? You know, that's a lot. Give Mother's Day, give them the weekend off. That's, in my opinion. Now, you baseball like enthusiasts and sports enthusiasts might not agree with me, but I just don't want to spend my Mother's Day getting up at the butt crack of dawn to go sit in a hot baseball field all day. Just my opinion. And that is a hot sports opinion. Is it? Yeah, sure. We did a lot of sports talk on this podcast. We apologize for that. Badminton, not a sport. I don't want to discuss that. Because you hit a shuttle, shuttlecock around to each other. You bat a shuttlecock to each other. Well, that's still a, that's, 
A substitute for a ball. No, I said a ball or a puck. Not a shuttlecock. Same thing. All right, babe. Same thing. Well, you got But I else? don't feel like debating. No. I'm a master debater. You got anything else? <sighs> Please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. If you just have pity on me and like and subscribe this one, I would appreciate it. Also, make sure you follow us on YouTube. Yes. A Sandwich and Some Lovin' is our YouTube channel. We're trying to build that up. We're just shamelessly plugging away. Just shot a video today, as a matter of fact, and I will be posting it in the next couple of days. Is it about your toilet repair? No. Well, I did that today, too. That was did you repair it? Beat down. Yeah, I repaired it. It's still running like crazy. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not running like crazy. After you left to go pick up wings tonight, it was still running. But it eventually stopped. It eventually stopped. It wasn't stops. stopping before. At all? Nope. It still runs a long time. Well, that's another part. All right, we'll just have to deal with it. At least it. I got it to stop. Okay. Yeah. That's half the battle. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for oh, doing that. Oh, but the YouTube video is another landscaping Al Landscaper Alonzo video. So okay, great. I'll be posting that pretty soon. People always want to know, what's in those pots? What's in those pots? Maybe you can do what a... What kind of plant is in those pots? Maybe you can do a golfing tutorial with me. Yeah, I guess I could. Be golfing for beginners. I'm not sure how... Over uh, the age of 50. How widespread that audience would be, but I guess we could. I'm sure there's a lot of people who look for golf tips online. Yeah, golf tips. Yeah, yeah. All right, babe. Well, anything else? No. All right. I love you desperately. Love you. I love our listeners desperately. Love y'all. I love the annual Rock for the Troops event desperately. This is where I won a car a few years ago. Lots of fabulous prizes. You might win the electric motorcycle this year. And there's a, a classic truck. Lots of guns. Lots of sports memorabilia. A Louis Vuitton. Never full. Wee oui, wee. Oui. And I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good when you have a good sandwich.